story I'll tell you about. This is going to be on a Kathy Gorda style of envelope mail. So I, I look on YouTube and I check it out. Her tutorial is still up there. So by all means, um, check it out. I need to make my niece a baby book. Um, the video that I have up at the moment is uh, showing two of my minis. I sold both of them. So I have this one to show you now. This is um, the style I'm going to make. I'm going to make it with the duct tape binding. Let me make sure you can see this. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. There we go. Um, so because I've seen a couple of them with the, um, the other, the hinge, uh, the hinge mechanism, there's another binding system, but I'm going to use the Kathy. This is the way she did it with the duct tape. This is the first time I ever saw duct tape. So we're going to create our hinges out of um, cardstock. We're going to use the envelopes and the cards that go with them as your um, uh, photo mats. We're going to create this middle pocket that has two pockets in it, the middle page, I should say. It has two pockets in the in the front and that's the one I'm going to be making so um, I need to make one for um, Rafe for her her teacher is having a baby so I figured I could take you guys along with me um, you're going to need uh, I use the Lectrolux's envelopes and cards cards and envelopes um, these are the bigger ones the five by six and a half but I also have made them in a smaller version so this is the same exact uh, construction. You're just going to use the smaller um, envelopes, and you're going to just have to alter or change your measurements a little bit. It's not that hard to figure out. Um, once you do the first one, you'll be able to tweak it a little bit and be able to. I've even made the tiniest ones. So um, that's what we're going to be using the big ones for right now. And I'm using the craft see they they come in black and they come in white um, and I think that's it um, but I've only used the black for the craft uh, so you're gonna need those you're gonna need six envelopes and six cards and so that's that you're also going to need a coordinating cardstock I happen to have um, the eight and a half or is that what this is eight and a half by eleven in craft, yeah, the eight and a half by 11. I didn't have any 12 by 12. When Kathy asked for these 12 by 12, you'll see I showed the black one. I have black if you want as well. So it depends on what you have. I'm going to give you the measurements based on what I have. So uh, I'm using the eight and a half by 11. So um, you'll need at least, I mean, you're going to need several pieces because the way she does it, you only need three pieces because you can cut the, the 12 inch paper into two six inch pages. So, but I can't do that. So we're going to have a little bit extra waste. It's fine. Um, so you need that. Then you're going to need card, um, chipboard. And this is from Joanne. Um, I like your chipboard. It's not too heavy and it's not too thin. I, I think it's like a medium weight chipboard. Um, I'm using the black because I just like the way it cuts on my cutter. I have the craft color too, but it doesn't really matter because we're covering the entire cover with paper, with the decorative paper, so it doesn't need to match. Um, your cardstock needs to match the color of the envelopes though because you're, they will see that. So you need um, a piece of chipboard, at least, um, I don't have my measurements handy, hold on, the chipboard, you need two pieces at seven and a half by five and a half. So I'm going to cut this on camera too because I want to show you how I cut my chipboard. But you need a big enough piece. This was a 12 by 12 piece that was cut. And then you're going to need Tyvek. This is the magic thing that um, holds your binding so strong. It's a it's an industrial uh, material. This is this happens to be from um, Staples. It's it says Dupont Tyvek. And if you've ever driven by uh, a construction site on the side of a building sometimes you'll see sheets of this and it's used for insulation I believe but this happens to be like a shipping envelope that I got at Staples so you can just buy these in packs um, and this is um, what we'll be using to reinforce our spine 
So at least you're going to need some height up there. I mean, you can make it without it, but probably a good, um, go ahead and get that because I've always used it and it seems to hold up really well. You're going to need a paper card, a paper trimmer, of course. You're going to need some type of adhesive. And for the construction of the book, I'm going to use my wet glue, but I'm going to adhere my decorative paper until it makes it easier. Um, Kathy's tutorials use the, um, the red line tape, or this is, this is a different brand. This is the, um, by Suquang. This is that really strong tape. Um, to, to a, you can use this to construct your book, too, and I've done that. But I realized that in my community, I live in South Jersey, and I have one other community, and when I use that to construct my book, sometimes they come apart. The humidity can make them come apart. So I've decided to use, from now on, I'm using the Scotch Tape Dry Adhesive. I really like this glue. I feel like it's strong. It dries quick, and um, it's not messy. I mean, it's, it's a great glue to work with. So we're, I'm going to use that to construct my book. Um, you're also going to need um, to score your pages. So I have a scoreboard here. I'm just using the Marshall Stewart um, scoreboard. And you really do need one of these if, if you can because it's just easier. You make such great score lines and all that stuff. So you need that and a rolling folder. I have, um, I've chosen to use the scallop since it's a baby book. It's a baby boy book. I'm going to use my scallop punch for any decorative edging I'm doing. Also using this um, pop it out corner chomper, I'm going to use the scallop um, corner chomper on my on my pads and stuff. That's just for decorative edge. You can just round your corners. You don't have to do anything to your corners if you don't want to. Um, and then scissors because you're just going to have to do a little bit of trimming here and there. Um, so that's basically it for your um, supplies. I guess we'll get started. I have. Um, you know what? I'm going to go away and come back and we'll get started. Okay, I'm back. The first thing we need to do is start to create our pages. And to do that, we're going to connect two envelopes to each other. We're going to do them back to back by gluing this. Um, let me see if I'm coming this up. Yeah. You're going to glue the little flaps to each other. And I've already done mine. I'm trying to do some and then show you guys. So you're going to take your glue, and I like to run it right next to the edge on this because you can always wipe off the excess. Let's see what I'm doing here. I know my hand's in the way. You want to really give it a good coating because this is your construction of the book. You really want this to stay together. Then I just take this part and really kind of just line up this edge to that edge as best you can. Want to check it with the wet glue too. It's kind of nice to um, fuzz it around, you know. Oops, fudged it a little too much. So just get those back to back, and then I have a paper towel just to wipe off the excess glue that stretches out. And really give that a a good webbing. A good uh, what do they call that? The garniture when you rub on it like that. And that's it. So you have that connected. No, I forgot to tell you guys. The four, actually you can do this. It doesn't matter if you're all, if your book is completed or not. You, you have to cut off a smidge of the edge of this uh, envelope. You have to open the envelope at the bottom. So, sorry about that. So, all I do is I kind of just line up the envelope. On my cutter, I have this little white space here. So, I just kind of put the edge of the envelope up against that white space. And that ends up being, it's like about, it, it might be a sixteenth of an inch, I'm not sure. And I close it. And I start cutting in the middle because it's like thick. So, you get about like a little I don't know if that's like a eighth or a sixteenth, but you just open up your um, envelope that way. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick on this side too. Oops, here. Sometimes it gets a little 
fun stuff in there. All right. So now we have this section. And you're going to need to create three of these sections. So you're going to glue two, two, and two, the, all six of your envelopes to each other. So that's uh, two pages. Now, to create, or I'll move this. <coughs> to create the center um, insert page, which I've already done here. Oh, no, that was the one I was going to use you for. All right. <coughs> Sorry. I made a lot of these, Steve. All right. So to create this section here, this middle section, you're going to need some um, cardstock. I'm just going to grab a piece of my uh, eight and a half by 11 and cut it down to six to six by 11. Let's see, is it six by 11? Let me make sure. Yeah. So we're going to do that three times. For the center page, you need three pieces of six by 11 or 12. If you have a, um, a 12 inch, a 12 by 12 inch cardstock, you can make it 12. It's just going to make your pocket a little bigger on the inside. And I've done it that way too. It's black ones like this. The black ones might turn, see it's taller, and I'll bet you these pages are shorter. They are. You can't really see the top of this page, and it's right here. So this is the 11-inch page, and that's the 12-inch page. So it just makes your pocket a little lower, but it's still perfectly fine, you know. So I just don't have any 12 by 12 um, cardstock for this. So I'm going to cut it down. I need three pieces of 6 by 11. So let me just cut one. But you're going to do this three times because you need um, three insert pockets. So that's uh, six by 11. So I'm going to put this away first so I can get my um, scoreboard out. And you're going to do this three times. You need three of these because this is your, you need, you have three sections on the inside here that you need to make. So we're going to score this at <coughs> um, half inch on both long sides. So we're going to do a half inch. Around and do a half inch and then do seven at seven inches because this is how long the page is. So you're going to do that for all three of your um, placement pages. So I'm just going to do one for time's sake. And here's what we just glued together. This is going to go in here to make our third page. So first thing you need to do is uh, cut this down. Oh, I just want to show you. Cut. We're going to cut little um, notches out of this uh, piece that we're going to be folding. It just makes it fold much neater. We're just going to take and make a little triangle here and on each um, on the top and bottom. So you're going to fold this up, and this is going to become your pocket, your little pocket. And we're going to fold these little, I'm not going to put them in the cut yet. Score those over. And you're going to glue that down to there. But before we do that, I like to score this over too. Score that over. And before we do any gluing, this is going to be your page. We're going to cut the other piece of paper that goes on this side to create the long pocket. So for that, you're going to need to do it three times. You might as well do it three times. Six and seven eighths by four and seven eighths. And that's going to go along the back of the pocket. Again, I don't have six and eighths. I have um, one of my eight and a half by 11 inch pages because I don't have. She would use the other side of her six by 12 pages to create a couple of these or to create mats or something or I'm going to have well for this I'm going to do well I, I only need one you guys need three so like for you guys let's see is there a way yeah you would definitely cut on this one I would cut six and seven eighths this way so that you could go four and seven eighths four and seven eighths and you'd get two pieces at least out of this it would be a lot less weight um well for me I think I'm just going to use this let's see I'm going to do four and seven eighths this way. And this one I need to, so I have like a big, bigger piece of scrap. I don't know, instead of just cutting it the long way. And then this is going to be six and seven eighths, right? Yeah, six and seven eighths. And this is going to create the back. And I've already done my other ones, but you would need three of these. And 
I'll show you again the measurements. So, so far we've done three at 6 by 11, and those are for um, the pH that, that we just scored and folded, but we're going to do that in a minute. So we need three of those, 6 by 11. Then we need um, three at 6 and 7 eighths by 4 and 7 eighths, and that's the three of these, because they're going to get glued to the back of this to create the back of our topping. We need three of those, three of those, three of those. Um, <laughs> all right, so then also we might as well, while we're cutting, and then we'll glue, but we're not going to glue these yet. Here are the hinges. We need three of these. These are to seal the copy at the bottom. And these are going to be cut from that scrap material I just had. This is actually what I cut off in the beginning, that little piece. So you could definitely use this for, um, because you want to make three of these at four and three quarters by two and a half. So let's see. This is definitely, I think this is two and a half. You know why I use two and a half? Because this is two and a half. So because I think she did hers like three inches or something. But this is 20 because all we wanted to do is go um, along the bottom here. This isn't sealed because we just glued that paper on the back. I'll show you in a minute. But the, see, this has comes out. So before, after we put our decorative paper on here, we're going to put this on the bottom, and it seals the bottom of the copy, and it also makes a little place that you could put, like, a journaling card or something in there. But you're going to need um, three of those, three of these pieces, which are uh, four and three quarters by two and a half. And I say two and a half because I used that scrap piece, and then I used a decorative punch. And I just used this scallop, and I think it's a um, bouquet success. And it's like a scallop with the little holes in it. It's like a lacy design. It's like a baby book kind of thing. All right, so you can use any decorative punch you want. And you're going to need three of those. And we're not going to put those on yet. See, i got to watch my time because of cutoffs. But I think we got to lay it out here, and I'm going to glue now. So we're going to glue. These are my wet glue. And I like to go, I know my hand's probably in the way. But I don't like to put it on the inside of this black, just toward the outside, because I don't want it to stick out and get in the pocket. I'd rather it sticks out in the outside. I can wipe that away. So just put a little stick of glue there and just gently fold it up. Okay. And it will kind of go to the edge. And I then push down with my paper towel and it stitches out this side and I can wipe that off burnish it down and then burnish this side see it sticks out the top a little but that's okay and that will create a nice seal and if you're uh, worried at all just take your um, scoring tool and make sure that's not stuck so that's your first pocket we're going to create the second pocket let's do the same thing I just go along the whole edge from the bottom to the top. If you're your, using score tape, whatever, you would just put your score tape down and do the same thing. Um, so I am going to do the top, but I just like to line up. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'll do it from the bottom. I'm not a lefty, though. But I would take these corners, kind of get them centered, fold it on the bottom, and then just push down. And as you go, make sure that it's along the edge so then you get it straight. And if it gets on the paper, that's fine because we're going to cover this with decorative tape when we're going to make this stuff next to add it next to it smush out all your stuff and let it out the side that's okay oops there's tissue in there and it's a little bit off center on this side i'll show you sometimes when you score and then you fold you might have a smidge overlap so i'm just going to cut that off and it'll be good as new that nothing's sticking up here but see 
that kind of food in the box. See that? So you have one pocket here, and that's sealed. But this one's not. So that's what that's record of as a score. But we're not going to put that on yet because we want our decorative paper to be under it so we can see that nice round edge. So we'll come back and after I check on you and make sure you leave that show you how to do that. All right, so now we've created our theme. We have to connect it now to our book. So you take your beginning two pages that we cut the edges off and our center. And I like to make, like, see how it's laying sometimes too. Like, see if it, um, if there, if it has, I don't know, if anything's going wrong with it so you can kind of fix it. But I think I'm going to do it this way. All right? And then this is the top of my theme. And I'm going to fit it in there so it's centered between these two um, edges and just a little off the center of this edge. Okay, let's see if I can get that to show. Okay, so it's not butt up against the crease. You do not want it butt up against the crease. Make sure you're not overlapping on this edge, but don't butt it up against the crease because that way you'll have a little more leeway if it was butt up against the crease, it makes it too fat in here, and your book will tend to be, it'll, like, when you close it, it'll close like this. So we're going to put a little glue, and we're going to put glue all over this triangular part. Keep it close to the edge again, but don't go down all the way to this edge, because like I said, we're not butting up against the, cor the edge, so it's come out underneath it, and it is there. Cover that with glue. Then again, you're going to line up, sorry, this should be my theme, and put your edge down, and just leave a little bit of room to tug it, and that's it. So right where that's lining up, I'm going to wipe away my extra. The only thing with wet glue, you just, and I have a wet wipe here too, because it's a little drier than it was earlier. Just wipe away that wet glue, but that's okay. It won't burn it. Let the glue burnish. Push down. Make sure you've got it all glued down well. All righty. All right. So that's page one. We have a pocket here, and we're going to cover this in a little bit with our decorative paper. So we have two pockets here. We just have to um, cover this at the bottom to seal it. And then two more pages, and we're going to cover these with decorative paper. Make sure that's nice and stuck down. All right, so that's, you're going to have three of these when you're done. You're going to have three. So I have three. One, then I just put my envelopes in there, but I can take them out because I was just making sure. Okay. Because we're going to make a tag. Let me see how much time it'll take. Six ten. So we're going to make a tag. Let's see if I can get it there. So I have three of these. I guess it's kind of hard to see the craft uh, card stock on the um, craft mat. <laughs> I didn't think of that. So I have two. open on the sides, and then you've created these middle pages, all right, so just set those aside, and we're going to make the tag, so we might as well make a tag, so you're going to need some more craft stock, card stock, I should say, I have craft card stock, that's why I said that, and these are going to be cut, this is for the large tag, you're going to need three of them, and they're seven and a half, by four and a half, Three of those, that's the large tag. And you're going to need three at five and a half by four and a half. That's the small tag. And I will put these measurements, I promise, in the description box. So you do not have to come into the video to find your measurements in the middle of making this. Um, but you're going to need three of each of those. I have two. I guess I thought I would show you how to cut these down, but we really don't need to do that. Um, I just want to show you this, though. I went with the scallops for my this, the little bottom closure. 
So I ended up doing a decorative punch on this. This is my crocodile, and I'm using the scallop side of it. It makes this little kind of wing shape, birdie wing or something. It's just a little decorative um, addition. So you, that'll fit in your top pocket, and then this one fits in the bottom pocket. You can always use a decorative edge on any place you want to when you're decorating your mini album. This is going to be really basic for me. I am not going to fancy this up too much at all. I'm going to keep it real simple. It's a gift for someone, and I just I need to get it to her too because she's in Jacksonville at school in a, for her teacher, and um, she's going to get out of school like next month. So I've been putting this off uh, for a long time. All right, so now you have your tags in your pockets. We're going to have some with tape, and I'm going to do this on this. I'm going to scallop the edges of this too. So I put this in here. And I love it because it's croc crocodile chompers. But now I have all my edges of that made a little more decorative too. So now when I stick that in here, matches the rest of them. I hope you can see that. Am I in the shot here? All right. And so I'll do one more. And then we're going to move on to our hinges. I'm going to show you. and what we're going to do with them. So we'll do that next. So you basically, your, your book is ready to assemble, and what you need for that is to have some in hinges. And the hinges are just going to be four of these strips of paper. You're going to need four at seven and an eighth by two. And we're going to score that so I did, I 